I've spent the last hour, hour and a half, trying to put this gearbox together that's taken me all week to get a decent print um, and, and the right design and everything together. It's got 20% overdrive in the gearbox. It reuses some of the TRX pieces. I'll go into detail in a bit. But first, I'm going to run it up this ramp that's about 46 degrees, nothing too taxing, just to see if the whole thing explodes. And this is literally the first time I've run it, and it's probably in reverse, but we'll find out. Yep, it's in reverse. So we're going to have to go up this thing in reverse. And it works. Ain't that great. Now I have no design background, I have used CAD in the past, but only for personal projects. I designed some gears first, then designed a skid, then took a load of weight out. And actually this gearbox weighs, with all the bearings and the axles and everything in it, 60 grams with an integrated skid. And the TRX gearbox and skid weighs about 200 to 250 grams. It lowers the motor by about 25 to 28 millimetres um, and it raises the axles. The TRX axles are very low and that's important for me because I run my truck really, really, really low and what was happening was where my diffs were, the drive line was going down. So this actually raises the drive line back up. Um, it, it has made my front links a little bit too long now, so I'm going to have to trim a little bit off those. Uh, but otherwise, that's pretty awesome. So let's take a closer look at this gearbox. It's, um, it's an overdrive gearbox, and it's currently designed purely for a 12 tooth, 2500 kV Holmes Hobbies revolver. Um, which, funnily enough, happens to be what I'm running with a Castle Sidewinder 4. The gearbox essentially has three gears in it, or, or three prints for gears in it, and the way it does the overdrive uh, is yet to be tested. This whole thing will be tested tomorrow, but the front and the rear gear have uh, the well there's a bearing inside the front gear that the rear output shaft um, hooks into so that becomes uh, one stressed member and that's been working quite well apart from my skid design has meant there's a bit of flex in the skid uh, all I've been doing it is running up and down a ramp um, but it's working good so far if we take a look at the underneath you should be able to see a bit more so this skid design is as lightweight as possible but I think I'm going to trade about 10 grams of plastic to make it a bit stronger there's this tab here and there's the mounting holes either side and what I do is I print this skid 100% infill and then drill the holes in which allows you to move the skid forwards and backwards for your preference what I'm also going to do is, this bit isn't flexing, but here is sort of flexing a bit when it's tipping. So I'm actually going to bring this all the way across and have the same tab on this side and just make it a bit of a, a stronger piece so it doesn't flex quite as much. Uh, it reuses the standard TRX gearbox output shafts. They fit into those two gears. Uh, it uses quite large bearings. They're 5mm inner diameter, 11mm outer diameter, and there's a total of five. So there's one in each end of here, and then there's one in the middle between the two gears and one in each plate. Um, as we can see, the gearbox is flexing a bit, and I'm going to fix that uh, by adding a bit more bracing. And in fact, where I said this bit that holds the two plates together was tight, it probably isn't tight enough. Um, I've got uh, a really ropey looking piece of aluminium running through as an axle. I tried to 3D print an axle, but I had a few too many issues with it. So I'm going to pop, I'm going to go back to the aluminium. I think that's a much better option. 
Uh, at the moment, the this bolt is capturing it fine, this one isn't. So I'm going to fill that full of Loctite and hope that sets and it should be fine. But yeah, it's, it gets your motor stupidly low in the chassis. Uh, camera's struggling to focus, hopefully we can focus on that. There we go. Um, yeah, no, the camera's refusing to focus, isn't it? Right, let's try this. It gets your motor so low that your that the outside of the outrunner is actually below the chassis rails. In fact, the outrunner is probably four mil from the bottom of the skid, maybe five mil. And that that really lowers it because the TRX one is sort of up here because you've got a um, you've got a motor plate. Uh, and the brazing one puts it quite high. This inverts it. This puts plastic and bearings nice and high and heavy things like motors nice and low. So yeah, uh, I'm going to keep testing it and we'll see where it gets us. Right, 65 degrees. Let's see. That's alright, isn't it? Oh, it's just lifting the wheel. And there it goes. That is crackers. It's lifting the front wheels because I've taken so much weight out of the middle <laughs> that the front suspension isn't sagging anymore. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that. Really not sure. But what I do know is I'm going to take it out tomorrow and have a good play with it. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you've got any more questions or if you want to know how I did this, um, just chuck a message in the comments. Thank you.